I feel like I'm doing like an interpreting job because I have on a black shirt. It's weird. Should I change my shirt? Should I take my hair down? <laughs> Why do I feel like this looks terrible already? Wow, my hair went crazy. Okay, so hi friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. I'm about to pop a coat and start one to watch by Kate Stamen London. And you guys seem to really like my Survivor song spoiler vlog. So I thought, why not do a spoiler vlog for this one? I'm buddy reading this with my bestie, um, Allie, and her channel name is Mrs. Dunn Reads. I will have her channel linked down below, but we're both plus size queens and we wanted to read a book about a plus size queen and this is the book that we both have to read. I think she has it as like an arc and I have like the finished copy from book of the month but this book is a little bit chunkier than I thought it was going to be like over 400 pages but we're going to do this. Um, so I got this in my June um, book of the month box and it's basically about our main hair to be who has always like criticized this show called the main squeeze it's it's a show like the bachelorette basically where a woman or a man goes on there and they try to find love or whatever and um she is a stylish plus size fashion blogger um and her life is pretty much great she has amazing friends a devoted family um insta followers but a massively broken heart um, so she weekly obsesses over the main squeeze and the fantasy dates and the kiss off rejections. Um, and then let's see, she's sick and tired of the lack of body diversity on the show. Um, and then it says, since when is being a size zero a prerequisite for getting engaged on television? Truth. And then... And just when she has sworn off um, dating altogether, she gets a call from the casting at Main Squeeze and they want her to be the next star of the show. And she agrees. And yeah, it's just going to be about that. So I'm really, really excited. I hope that this inspires pop culture, like, m like media to take a look and you see that plus size women can be in these type of things. And it's just as wonderful. So yeah, I'm going to start this today. I'm going to be doing spoilers. So if you don't want spoilers, this is not the vlog for you. You can hop over to Allie's channel because I think she's reading this in conjunction with some other books. So you'll probably just get like her non-spoilery thoughts so i will have her video linked down below where she talks about this book because i know she's going to be doing a video for it um i just don't know when it's going to go up so if her link's not down there yet it will be so just you know stay tuned but it is currently sunday the 19th of july that means the reading rush starts tomorrow and i have three books i want to read for the reading rush so i'm also going to be reading this as well so it should be an interesting week so if you're interested in spoiler thoughts stay tuned let's go ahead and dive in hey friends i'm here with an update about one to watch and i'm already 98 pages into this story it goes really really quickly because there's like lots of transcripts like this and text messages and like the contract and like emails and stuff like that so it's going very very quickly and I'm gonna sit down and touch on like some specific things that have like stood out to me but oh my god you guys oh my god so the person that I'm buddy reading this with Allie my really good friend we talk on Marco Polo a lot we text a lot um yeah we just we're besties so anyway she sent me her meatloaf recipe and because i wanted to make it for my husband so i was feeling pretty crummy yesterday so i ordered groceries online to be delivered today and i made my husband's meatloaf and he loves it it's Allie's recipe i think it's like her mom's recipe that she uses i don't know all i know is it's freaking delicious 
So I made my husband a meatloaf and I also got plant-based ground beef and made my own meatloaf right here. So this is 100% vegetarian meatloaf. And guys, number one, it's so easy to make. And number two, it's so delicious. So here's my bowl right here. And I actually took this chunk out right here. So here is my husband's meatloaf. Here is my meatloaf. It's so good. All right, we are back to talk spoilers. I am almost 100 pages in, page 98. And I just wanna go through, I have been highlighting some things throughout. I just thought I would read you a couple of things. So it starts with the prologue in Paris, France, and that is 10 years ago. And she's in her junior year of college and um, she's visiting this market and she finds this really fabulous cape but um she talks about how like it's only on page four and b's already talking about how like skinny women can order and eat all of the pastries they want and nobody bats an eyelash but the second a plus size person walks into a bakery everybody gives them the side eye and it says B stepping carefully sideways to avoid toppling someone else's plate of plain um, pain au chocolat, salivating at the sound of those crunchy buttery pastries like waif-like Parisians relish each morning without a second thought. Whenever B stepped into the pastry shop um, to order something for herself, there were ripples of sideward glances, even occasional bald stares. The accusation always implied, it's your own fault you look like this so true b is a fashion blogger and she is what is happening in this scene oh this is a interview with um tony santo from thecut.com and it's just like an interview with her and she says and especially when it comes to high-end designers many brands that do claim to offer plus size clothes only go up to size 16 which i find ridiculous because like size 16 is essentially average for women in america so i highlighted that little bit and then i want to shake designers and say hey do you guys hate fat women so much that you're willing to cut out two-thirds of your potential customers do you really see our bodies as so unworthy of wearing your clothes i think that every day of my life <laughs> they don't expect and by they, I mean like like high-end fashion designers, houses, don't expect plus size people to want to be fashionable or something. Like it's just so bothersome. Um, I mean, we already pay more for regular clothes. Why wouldn't we pay more for something designer? Thin women are no more happy than I am that these insecurities are seeded and tended in my brain by the weight loss industry, which profits from our collective self-loathing to the tune of $70 billion every year, despite the fact that 97% of diets fail. Right there, page 28, serving the truth. Then they're talking about the show Mean Squeeze and like what would happen if one of these women wore pants or had short hair? Would the world end? Obviously, they would never be above a size four. Um, and then she's also talking, it's like, before you tell me about that one size, that one plus size girl who was on the show, that one time she was a literal model and she got eliminated the first night, so don't even. There's just so much. So she agrees, basically, she, I guess there's this guy that she was like friends with or she worked with, and she's always liked him, but he's engaged now, but he was coming to visit, um, like before he went on like a business trip or like somewhere, and they ended up sleeping together, and she thought like, oh my gosh, it's finally happening, but just kidding, it wasn't. And a random, you know, turn of events, um, she speaks out about, because I guess like the newest um, season of The Main Squeeze was on and her and her really good friend were watching it and she was tweeting about it then she wrote a blog post about it about like the lack of diversity and stuff like that and then they actually came to her and said hey do you want to be the next main squeeze so they described it to her and all of that and she's finally the main squeeze she's on the show she signed the contract she went out to california and um 
yeah it's just crazy so i actually stopped like right at the like after she met the guys this book is going by so fast it's highly readable i'm enjoying every second well i mean like it's definitely dealing with some tough topics and it's speaking some truth but you know what i'm saying when i say i'm enjoying it right okay so i don't know if you can tell but i am tabbing so much stuff i'm currently 34 percent in so i read 34 percent and it's just like so good um there was this one guy that she is trying to like hook up with her and um let me find that part oh yeah for years i've wondered what it would be be like with someone like you and she's like someone like me those arms those lips that body god be you're so big i bet i could just disappear into you ew like gross then there is another guy anyway i've been wanting to tell you i think it's so cool you're here i've wanted to meet you for a while even before i knew we were going to be doing this show together and she's like really you knew who i was yeah i had this client who wanted to show me how big she used to be except for she couldn't find any old pictures on her phone so she pulled up your feed and then she says um oh he goes on to say wow and and I was like, wow, I could really help that girl. It's so wild that now I actually get to meet you. And B's expression went dark. Help me how exactly? I mean, obviously you don't want to look like that, right? And then he's like, there's so much stuff we could do together. Diet, exercise regime, but like really holistic stuff. Mind, body, wellness. It wouldn't be about changing your looks per se. It's more about helping you be healthy. And then she's like, tell me, Kamal, she said in her voice low. What exactly do you know about my health? Have you seen my blood sugar, my heart rate, my cholesterol? And he's like, no. And he goes, no, you haven't. Yet you assume I'm unhealthy because of my weight. Is that right? That is such a true thing. People automatically assume that plus size people are unhealthy. So, and then like it goes on and on and on. I was trying to help, but hey, if you want to die at 30, that's your business. And she smacks him back with, well, I don't turn 31 until September. So I guess there's still time. I'm just like, oh, it's so frustrating. One thing that I really liked was she's talking to like, I think she's like the producer of the show and she keeps like trying to make things better for me like do things that make things better but she says you have to stop assuming that i'm going to experience these dates the way you would i don't live in your body men don't treat me like they treat you and that's just so freaking true and it spoke to my soul so yes there's so many good things in here that are like really speaking to my truth and like it's crazy that like it's in a book and i'm like i experience and hear these things every single day here with an update and we're gonna ignore the state of my hair right now it is blazing hot here today and i'm just trying to keep it off of my neck and i'm too lazy to actually style it or do anything to it so i am blazing through one to watch i am reading this so fast and that's good um because tomorrow's the reading rush i am currently on page 202 it's about the 46 percent mark i just updated my goodreads um it's 417 pages and i'm on page 202 so anyway let me just sum up everything that's been happening so our main character b has gone on main squeeze as the main squeeze and 25 guys um met her on like the premiere night and she's been going on dates just like the bachelorette would um and i think it's so much like set on like how the bachelorette is that there's like quotes about the bachelor and the bachelorette like for Didi, who thinks it wouldn't kill the woman on the bachelor to wear pants to a cocktail party once in a while and then there's even a quote from chris harrison who is the host of the bachelor and the bachelorette so um i don't think it's any like it's not hidden it's not a secret that this is like based off of the bachelorette bachelor world franchise whatever um and i definitely think that show does need 
like more diversity like body diversity um people of color etc and just having like one black person that doesn't really count as diversity anyway um so i think i'm on like the fourth episode but it seems like it's going like much quicker obviously than like a normal season would of the bachelorette they're already visiting um b's parents the guys are and it's kind of weird because the main like producer lady or whatever that convinced her to do this that said like i'm gonna have your best interest at heart has done a couple of things that just like make me really know that like she doesn't get it and as much as she's trying to do good like she just doesn't know like the experience of being a plus size woman so she doesn't know like what's good what's bad and of course she has B's interest at heart but she also has like the ratings and the show like as like more important than B almost um so she's doing like certain things that make me think like okay she gets it okay she doesn't <laughs> and things like that um right now they're home so she's been on a few dates there's been a couple of connections or seemingly connections like that's the thing like you don't know what is produced what is not what is real what is not um of course there's the villains of on the show that are just saying like horrible things about her like comparing her body to a beached whale or like a boar or you know things like that and um yeah so saying horrible things about her so of course there's the villain characters and then there's the characters that you're like okay this could actually be really cute and really work but now she's at her house with her parents and her brothers and their wives and her nieces and nephews and um you know there's interviews back and forth between like um, B and her parents and her parents and her brothers and her, her sisters-in-laws and like the suitors and stuff like that and there's this like there's a couple of guys that are standing out there is this French guy that seems kind of nice but like you just don't know because of like some of the things he said and then there's Wyatt who seems really nice kind of like down home country guy from Oklahoma I think that is the guy um and then there is this other guy that she went on a museum date with and we just got the big reveal of like why he didn't kiss her at the museum was because he has two kids at home and it just seemed like almost too perfect um because i'm only on page 202 and it seems like this is the guy that i would be rooting for at this point but i'm like obviously this isn't the end because like i'm only halfway through the book so i'm like something has to go down there has to be some type of conflict I'm texting allie right now six and i'll stop there until you tell me to dive back in this far in I've read all of that like oh my gosh and I only have this much to go I'm currently on page 272 and it is literally so bingeable so 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 bingeable um I think I've said it before I'll say it again it's like a season of the bachelorette except for this time we finally have a plus size main character as the main squeeze and just the um, stuff leading up to her actually start starting the show um, the article some for some against some in the middle and then like the things that actually happen on the show and Oh, it's just so good and um the end of episode five was so frustrating i literally highlighted so much at the end of episode five like literally two pages worth and just she is down to five guys at this point and um she lets go of jefferson and jefferson was obviously 
upset, pissed, not a good guy. And when she offers to like walk him out, he's like, are you kidding me? You think you can do better than me? Trust me, B, I've never had a problem getting a girlfriend and none of them have ever looked like you. And at first she's like, no, I, Jefferson, it's not a matter of better. It's about what I want for my future. And what you want is to go live on a farm in Oklahoma. That's your dream. Please be, you're a fat hypocrite. I guess that's half a revelation. And she's like, I'm sorry, what? And he's like, you heard me. Um, now that I'm out of the competition, I guess I can finally be honest with you. Good thing too, since no one else has been. And she's like, what are you talking about? I'm talking about B is the fact that none of the men in this room is remotely interested in you, least of all me. And it just gets worse from there. So. Oh my gosh. Episode seven was crazy. I knew there was something off with Luke. I just knew it. Like I knew he was bad. But then Lauren, oh my gosh. What? freaking jerk i don't trust lauren anymore all right friends i wanted to check in with my spoilery thoughts of one to watch because i just finished episode eight and i am flabbergasted i stopped last night on episode six to let Allie catch up because I was like so far ahead of her and I felt so bad so I just told her I was like I'm gonna stop here and then like let me know when you catch up and she did catch up she's absolutely obsessed with this book like I am um and we're gonna finish it today obviously so in episode six like they're basically doing the hometown dates where she goes to the guys hometowns so I don't even remember like there was four guys yeah she goes to so she had her hometown date and then she goes to their hometowns and um yeah like varying results you know what i'm saying like she finds out more about them there's this one really cute scene how like the generators go off and they're like out in this cornfield or out in this field of wheat or something like that super cute she really gets to connect and get to know a guy that she's really built like a really good friendship with um i think his name is wyatt and just like he admits to her that like he really doesn't have any romantic feelings or sexual desires or uh, like he doesn't feel those emotions. And I just thought that that was like really special and really sweet that he shared that with her. They went on their romantic dates. Like they're in France and the three guys remaining all get to take her on these like whirlwind dates. And the first date she goes on with is Sam. And I thought it was like really cute. Like he's already professed his love for her. And I just think he seems like a really cute, sweet guy. Like his situation, I guess he's younger than she is by like a few years but um he just hasn't found like his direction in life really so much but he sounds like he's getting there you know and he really likes her and he really cares about her but i just don't feel like the romantic connection between them but i really 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 like asher who so sam ends up not going on the um overnight like fantasy suite uh like overnight thing with her without the cameras because he's trying to show her that like look how mature i am whereas to her it just looks like he doesn't want to spend that one-on-one -on -one time with me so it's kind of like he thinks he's doing the right thing and she's like that made me feel like crap and then the second date that she goes on is with asher and it's just uh he tells her about like how much his kids like her and like all of this but he also chooses not to go to the fantasy suite with her and she again like i understand why he said that he didn't like sorry there's a plane going on overhead obviously but he chose not to do it because of like his kids he's like you know i don't want to you know do this thing and it like you know i have to think about my kids but i was thinking to myself like that just seems like classic guy but for a woman we're like you need to prove to your kids that like you're gonna go after what you want and you're trying to make yourself happy and like obviously you don't want it to come off like oh I'm having sex with this woman I just met but like you also want to get to know her on a like a deeper like 
without the cameras on type way and so this was your opportunity to do that and you didn't do it i was kind of let down by that but then the third date is luke and he has like done this really elaborate date where they go to this like ball and this like castle and it's so magical and she invites him back to the fantasy suite and of course he says yes so of the three guys he's the only ones he's the only one that goes and they do have sex together which is crazy um because i was just thinking like about like the bachelorette and the bachelor and like I'm sure, I am sure some of them have sex, but I wouldn't think all of them do. Like that's just really nasty. But I think it is a good chance to like get to know them like more one-on-one -on -one without the cameras and talk about stuff that you didn't feel comfortable talking about, like for all of America to watch have sex and then the next morning she's having a really hard time because the ceremony the kiss off ceremony is going to be later that night and she wants to talk to Lauren who's like the producer or whatever like that and as soon as she started looking for Lauren I knew I knew she was going to be sleeping with one of the three guys and I was so freaking terrified like who it was going to be I didn't know I didn't know who I wanted it to be who I didn't want it to be I was just Ugh, I was so frustrated. Of course, she goes to where Lauren is editing and she, you know, opens the door and she hears noises and she goes to like the bathroom, I think it was. And yes, Lauren was having sex with Luke, the man that B herself just slept with hours earlier finished and oh my gosh Gwen this was such a good book man I don't even know I can't even remember what I told you but when when Ray walked onto the set I was furious I was like are you kidding me she finally has people who really like her for her she's moving on the Luke thing don't even get me started with the Luke thing I was like so pissed off oh my gosh guys I am so hot it is 104 right now it is extremely hot here I'm just outside of Virginia Beach today and I am sweating obviously I had to leave and go get my dog's medicine um her bravacto like you know flea and tick stuff um so yeah so i have to give that her that when i get home um she takes it really well so like no issues but i have very exciting news i finished one to watch and i'm rating the story five out of five stars it is so good you guys it really speaks to not only like the plus size like industry but just like representation is wonderful in this like plus size representation a sexual representation aromatic representation um just people of color representation um and just it really speaks to that like a bachelor bachelorette experience i said many times it showed like behind the scenes stuff and while i don't know like if it directly reflects stuff that has happened in the bachelor and bachelorette it feels very very authentic down to two it was down to um oh yeah and then ray walked back so she kicked luke it was asher and sam left ray walked onto the stage and then asher walked out and i was pissed because I wanted her to be with Asher. I thought that was the best fit. I thought that they would have really like made it. Um, and of course we get to see the behind the scenes, not just like what they show us on TV. So it like made it extra hard for Asher to walk away. Um, but so then she actually does not really give Ray a chance, but they do have like a little walk along the canal and they kiss and I'm thinking what are you thinking? Even her best friend Marin was like you need to let him go. He has hurt you like way too much to like even be considered absolutely crazy that it comes down to Sam the younger guy. He's a black guy. He's younger than her. He doesn't really have like a career per se. He's still living at home with his parents and 
good. You know, B is like this really successful, like, boss bitch. And um, I didn't really feel like the romantic connection. I thought it was like a good friendship, a good start. But, like, not what she was looking for or what she needed at the time. And then since Asher walked off, it was Ray there. And... So it came down to the part where she goes, she looks at rings, the guy chooses a ring, and then one's going to be turned down, one's going to be like, they're, she's about to get engaged, and they go to this really romantic spot, and she turns both of them down. <laughs> love that yeah she turns both of them down because she's not in love with either one of them and so the show just kind of ends I love how neat she didn't accept Ray's proposal or Sam's proposal because she really loves Asher and he walked out and he's gone so so the show is over they're just doing the like the um, what's it called the reunion and she's admitting like you know yeah it, this is fine like everything's fine when it's really not fine and she's really still like happy that she went on the show because like she feels like she proved to herself and proved to like people that were list or willing to listen that like it shouldn't matter about your body size like you deserve love too um but then like she's really hoping hoping that Asher will show up and he doesn't and then who comes in clutch Asher's kids they're like dad you're really sad you really love her I don't know what the issue is and yeah so the whole story is over it's officially over reunions over everything's over and there's a little epilogue and it's so cute how they like meet at the museum and now they're dating and it's like oh my gosh and then oh my gosh the scene where um she's working at like Teen Vogue out in where are they now I don't I forget not in California where I thought they were gonna be I think New York and she's working at like Teen Vogue and they go in like the the closet where they have all the fancy clothes and stuff and they're going because Linus wants to try on the clothes and they go and at the very end OMG OMG um let's see la, 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 where is it oh I like how it gives like a where are they now I'll get to that in a minute but life with Asher and Brooklyn just fit. It felt to be the way you sometimes pull on a great pair of jeans and intuitively know they're going to button. Oh my gosh, I just love it. And then it says, um, okay, once they arrived at Vogue, a, col a colleague of B's met them at the reception of the main tour, um, the fabled Vogue closet. Linus had been begging for a visit ever since B started her job. After months of finagling, it was finally happening. He was absolutely beside himself as they toured the rooms of slacks and ball gowns, raincoats, and rompers. B was pretty impressed with herself. It wasn't every day you got to share a room with Couture from the from like fashion history. Um, and then they went to the accessories closet and then there were scarves, shoots, belts, glory, and even a couple of capes. Um, and then B's colleague told Linus it was okay for him to try some things on and B thought he might actually pass out right there. And I think he's having the best day of his life. B linked her arm through Asher's. Maybe he's not the only one, Asher said, his lips twitching in a cryptic little smile. You're enjoying that this much, B laughed? Do you have a shoe fetish you haven't told me about? Now that you mention it, I've been thinking you could use a new accessory. I have a pretty specific idea in mind. Oh yeah, B stammered. Are you picturing like some sunglasses or a hat? No, Asher said. As he dropped to one knee, he took a black velvet box from his jacket pocket and he opened it b saw a glimmer of rose gold and opals through her tears i was thinking more like a ring and i'm just dying because it's the ring that she saw that was like the tree shape that like wasn't perfect but she thought it was gorgeous and it was vintage and it's so b and i'm like oh my god I just oh I love it so yeah you can tell I tabbed the crap out of this it was just like such a good book um the where are they now section I really 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 liked that because you know there's always like some standout people so there's farm fresh favorite white Ames and they finally say on page he's working to promote outreach and acceptance for the asexual and aromatic communities he's never been happier and i'm just like yes say
say that shit on the page and then bad boy luke and then they talk about sam and they talk about ray and they talk about like asher and just oh my gosh and allison who was the fashion like you know she did the clothing for me just such a good book please read this if not for like like if you're not a plus size woman like that's fine you still need to read this book especially if you like the bachelor and the bachelorette but also to just like get insight into how like plus size people feel when things are said about them and how they have to like question everybody's motives like at all times it's so 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 good again five out of five stars you're gonna hear me raving about this for a long time to come like i said i tapped the crap out of it so that concludes another spoiler vlog this time i did one to watch last time i did survivor song by paul tremblay that one i was super disappointed in this one i absolutely loved so thank you so much for watching i hope you're all having a lovely day or night and i'll see you guys again soon bye